Thanks for coming in today. Rob, good to see you. We are back at it again in the CJ4. Because I just can't get enough of this thing. Thanks for coming in today, everybody. Let's do some flying. We're going to take the CJ4 from Reno, Nevada to Telluride, Colorado. Might be a little bit of pucker factor getting into Telluride because there might be a little bit of weather by the time we get there. Potentially. It's always a little bit... Interesting getting into Telluride also with the field elevation being 9,050 feet and being up in the mountains. So it'll be uh, a challenge as always. It'll be something. Let's put it that way. So we have already received our pre-departure clearance from Oakland Center. We are transponder 3270. Cleared as filed. Climb via SID. Expect 3701 zero after departure. Departure frequencies with the center on 132.2. All that is good. We can expect runway 16 left. So we already have our pre-departure clearance, which means we do not need to call for a clearance. We just need to turn the airplane on, get the flight plan in, and get ready to taxi. So I am going to do just that. And I'm going to do the cheater way of getting started, turn everything on, and then I'm going to hit Control e and let the airplane do all the work for me. You call me lazy if you want. It's just easy. I'm not here to be judged yet. May I have your attention, please? The captain has turned on the seatbelt sign. Please fasten your seatbelt and shoulder harness. At We're going to be on the Zephyr 6 departure here out of Reno. So top altitude is flight level 190. So we're going to go ahead and stick flight level 190 into our aircraft. I'm doing that off the screen. Uh, we're going to depart off of the left side. It looks like it's pretty much just runway heading up to here and then Zephyr. And we're going to be in nav the whole way. We are on the pesky transition so we're going to be zephyr at posi oldie and pesky will verify that when we put the flight plan in so it'll be a de nav departure instead of a heading departure out of here makes life very very easy for an airplane like this and here's the full route that we're doing for our zephyr six pesky mike victor alpha errata and then cones echo tango lima vor and telluride it's almost a straight shot might be a little bit of weather here but it's not going to really affect us if it stays to the south Again, there is a chance of some snow later on tonight in Telluride, but we might get there before that starts. Right now, the wind is calm, which is good since it's one way in, one way out. Visibility and ceilings are good. Hopefully, that holds so that it's not too challenging on our way in. Again, Reno also with a little bit of overcast sky, but the wind 0907, nothing crazy going on there either. Temperatures 3, altimeter 299 or 2. Pretty straightforward stuff. Nothing too crazy about what we're doing tonight. Just a nice CJ flight up into Telluride and... See if Telluride gives us any kind of uh, challenge, as it were. You never know. Turn my flight director on. We're going to start with vertical speed, but uh, it'll probably change to flight level change almost immediately upon departure out of here. Uh, we are going to be in nav uh, on the way out. But let's go ahead and get our flight plan in, since, again, we've already got our pre-departure clearance and we are cleared as filed. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to do before I forget, because I almost forget every time, is put my squat code in of 3270. One last thing to forget. I appreciate you saying that, Mr. Rob Valkyrie. 1322 is the center. I guess we can start listening to him talk, since we're going to have to talk to him upon our way out of here, assuming he is still online. Turn some of the lights on in this bad girl. All right, we can turn these off because the engine's started. Off, I said. All right, all that looks good. She's lit up nice and nice like a Christmas tree. And now, like I said, we'll get this flight plan in. Delta 1176, advising up for San Francisco. K-R-N-O. Clear dialysis to a left approach. To K Telluride, K Tex. We have an alternate of Eagle, so I am going to put the alternate in here of uh, EGE. Well, I guess it doesn't let you put the alternate in. So we just figured that one out, chat. Good to know. All right, we're going to be departing off a of 1-6 left out of here. Back Zephyr 6, pesky transition. So we'll get that all in there. So all that after pesky. We have MVA. Which I do not know the name of that VOR, but that's yeah. fine. We have Erda. Erda. E-R-R-D-A. I guess we'll call it Erda. Very dumb. And then we have Cones, which is Echo Tango Lima. And then technically yeah, it would be, um, it's going to be right on to the arrival. So you know, I'm going to go right into here, arrival into Telluride, runway 9. Who said that? 
Interesting. It doesn't have the approach. Six shot pop in traffic at 11 o'clock, two miles the runway, after the action, 1,000. Am I, am I looking at miles. the wrong runway? What the? Oh, this... Six shot pop in red, maintain visual separation, caution right turn. This kind of makes things a little Redis annoying. Kilo, pop the heavies, radar contact, See, the all right, I'm going to have to pull up this in manually the then. So it's not that easy, chat. Separation. All right, so here is the Arnav Zulu into KTEX, which apparently is not in the aircraft. That's an interesting little glitch here, Microsoft. So we have yeah, cones. Kilo, After that, we just have SEPMA. And that's really the only thing that we have to add in there is C-E-P-M-A. United 268 RNAV to tie-dye, one right. Unable mod discontinuity. Canada Air 2694, RNAV stick, one left, clear for standing up. Why won't it let me get rid of the con discontinuity? Air Canada plus 66, turn left, one Just had to put it in a different slot. Whatever. Thank you. I'm going to delete that. that. I'm going to delete Carolina. this. Execute. Okay, that's what I want, chat. Uh, and then cones the at uh, one Clinton. three thirteen uh, thousand. Zero 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 one two special. Bring you guys back here. I apologize. One, 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 I'm glad I wasn't showing that because the airplane was doing some weird stuff. And then at SEPA, we are at a SEPA. Excuse me, it's at twelve nine. So twelve nine. That's all that matters. And then right into tell you right there. I don't know what's going on with ATC right now, but apparently there's a Leroy Jenkins happening. Anyways, flight plan's ah. in, after that little bit of annoyance. We have come to, again, we have our standard two passengers, 150 pound bags that I'm going to throw in here. Clock. We're going up to 37000. Boom, in there, our takeoff. Ah. We have the temperature was 3 here, and the wind was 090 at 7. We get the next page. We'll send those speeds. Run always dry. All that's good. We'll worry about the approach stuff when we get a little bit closer because we do have a bit of a flight going over to Telluride, so I'm not super worried about that. I want to change this right here to my present position as a map as well. So we'll have that nice and up and in there. Um, so everything looks copacetic to me. Hopefully it actually works as it should. Um, now that we've got it all kind of squared away and set up here, so we'll see what happens. But we're going to go ahead and get started now that the flight plan is in. Again, flight level 190, Canada Columbia SID, altimeter. All right, all that is good. I think the airplane is all set, Chad. Let's get ready to get some moves going here. We're going to take away the uh, the old parking brake. Oh, this is the parking brake right here. What am I clicking, Chad? I have no idea. Air Canada, 566, turn left heading 330. All right. Citations are Mike Delta, reduce speed to 210. Let's get this baby moving, get the flaps 15 degrees, so I don't forget that, because that's something that I forget commonly as well. We're going to run this guy over, because he's just kind of in the way, so sorry guy. Get Adam away. Got to find the exit over here, I believe it's right over here, here we go. Reserve back data, cancel, bridge clearance, for seek one thing, flighting, 010, and the set of maintain 4000. Zero one zero to four seven zero. Okay, I got five sixty six. Maintain presence, Peter Gator. Let's see if we can get a word in edgewise here with Oakland Center. Center, good evening. Citation one two four. Mike Charlie Squawk three two seven zero on the ground. Arena ready to taxi. FedEx three eleven. Taxi to Whiskey Bravo to the ramp. Enjoy. Number 124, Mike Charlie, Open Center, hello. Running 16 left, taxi via Charlie, altimeter 29 or 9 or 2. 16 left via Charlie, citation 124, Mike Charlie. Easy enough, chat. Right turn here to the end of 16 left. Gany Monster, thanks for coming in today, my friend. Air Canada 566, turn left heading 310, doing the 2 8 left localizer at San Francisco Airport, 10 o'clock, 20 miles, reporting time. 
We're gonna have to go through that car that's on the taxiway. Oh no, he turned off. Very good. Better than normal for the sim movements. My Christmas was very nice. It was just with my immediate family and we had good food and it was a great time. How was your Christmas, Kenny Monster? I hope you had a good one, my friend. The event, uh, the flying club event also went very, very well on Christmas night. Um, we ended up having 24 flying club members participate in the event, so it was a very good little event for the flying club as well. Delta traffic to follow, 12, moving 11 but I hope you and your family had a good Christmas. 4, 000, in Air Canada, hope Santa got you something good. Citations are Mike Delta, uh, you got the traffic? Uh, you're Mike Delta, Sure. Uh, Saint Vincent, Mike Delta. Traffic 11 moving 10 o'clock now. Three miles northwest bound 4,000 approach in the Dunbar Bridge from the south. The 320 and Eric County call is reporting that. Oh, I'm happy to hear that, Mr. Kenny Monster. Sounds like a good Christmas to me. Three one three one zero three one zero. Christmas to you. I'm actually taxiing at a more reasonable pace than normal chat. Instead of going balls to the walls fast, we're taking our time getting out to the runway here. We're in no rush tonight. Have some fun. Be a nice relaxing flight over to Telluride. All the fun part will be getting into Telluride. That's when the uh, real pucker factor might actually kick in on this flight. A little bit of mountain there around Reno, but nothing that the citation is going to have a problem climbing over. Uh, it's going to really be just interesting to see how the approach in a Telluride goes. And in real life, the pucker factor is always very high. Uh, going into Telluride. We're zero with Sorry about that. I promise you lower to set of 18. Uh, Looks like the taxiway kind of goes to the right here. Is that correct? It is. We're zero with Gatorade. Fly present heading. That's the vector visual approach. I'm going to bet you off to the uh, northeast there, bringing you back for the base. So we will do a little jig to the right and a little jig to the left. The wind's showing the 130 at 6 there. Uh, do you can plan for any 14 if you'd like? And we'll let him know we're ready to go. You guys ready to go? Hope you guys are ready to go. Seatbelt sign is on. Runway 14. May I have your attention, please? For sure, Mike Delta, do you have the traffic or the airport inside? Airport to 12 o'clock and 1 5 miles, Sunday, maintain 3000. Airport inside, do you have Mike Delta? Is there Mike Delta clear visual approach running three right? Uh, the same A320 I was referencing before is about two miles from the uh, San Mateo Bridge out of 2800 is for the parallel. Caution, Mike Terminal. Mike Delta, I have no company. I do have no company. Alright, Eric Canada 566, we're running three left, clear to land. Sky 6 Charlie Papa, runway 13, clear to land. Number four, Mike Charlie, runway one six left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, one six left, citation one two four, Mike Charlie. Look at that. Didn't even mean to call him, chat. Number zero, whiskey X ray, trim left heading two seven zero. Finals clear, okay. runway's clear, everything's on, lights are on. Clear for takeoff, we're going nav, vertical speed, follow the SID. Up to flight level 190. We're squawking, we're rocking, we're ready to go. There's V1. Rotate. Reserve with X-ray, uh, Santa maintain 4,000. Positive rate, you're up. In the Santa Rosa Airport, as you turn there, to your 9 o'clock in about 3 miles, report the Santa. This is the 4,300 before airport inside. Reserve with X-ray, so you're going to report inside, or you do have it inside? And yaw damper, autopilot on, bring the flaps up. Okay. Reserve with X-ray, just to... To the what are we supposed to be doing here, for, uh, plane? You should be going direct to Zephyr, plane. That's what you should be doing. 
get this speed back here. We'll go into flight level change. Do 240 in the climb. Visual approach, San Jose Airport. Citation 124 Mike Charlie 6600 via the SID. 124 Mike Charlie's radar contact, climb and maintain flight level 190. Flight level 190, citation 124 Mike Charlie. Flight level 190 at B, chat. Right, 254, contact Los Angeles Center 125.8. We got the gear up, we got the okay, flaps okay. up. So okay, everything's so good. We're going to climb at our 240 on the yeah. speed, flitch mode, all the way up to 190. Get a good view of just south of Reno here. Yeah, I want to go direct east bay. Like, uh, so it's like we're getting ourselves into the cloud just a little bit here. Direct, uh, do it. Direct, do it. Ten two six four. And what was that last call for Delta? When we get through ten here, I'm going to just increase this to two fifty. A second. We'll climb and at two fifty. And what was that last call for Delta eleven seventy six? Delta eleven seventy six. I'll probably give you your approach clearance. Yeah. We have better idea. Don't need that. Roger. Pretty much on our way. It's pretty straightforward. All the departure stuff right there. Just follow the flight now. Wait for a higher climb to flight level 190. As it stands right now, we have ATC all the way. Salt Lake Center is on. Denver Center is on. So as long as they both stay on, we'll have ATC the whole way. Should be nice. Wouldn't be mad about that. She's doing good, chat. Climbing as she Alpha should. Center, Alaska 513, flight level 320. Alaska 513, Oakland Center. We are definitely getting some ice. Let's turn these on. For 4 Mike Charlie, change to my frequency 127.95. 2795, 4 Mike Charlie. Charlie Foxtrot, Julia Whiskey, India, Oakland Center, how do you hear? Citation for my Charlie up on 127.95. Right there, that was uh, the static carrier only. <clears throat> Got that one. Four Mike Charlie's up on 2795. For Four Mike Charlie, thanks. Climb and maintain uh, flight level 290. Flight level 290, Four Mike Charlie. 290 set, chat. Let's do the flight level change. We'll go to. Let's see what. Uh, for four Mike Charlie, Kodak Mida. Mike Charlie, Alpha, that's where they can go. Direct Mida, Four Mike Charlie. So we'll take a direct, very nice. We'll climb at 260 above 10 right, here. Actually, with the India. Can hear We're the happy to take a shortcut, not a problem with that at all, so we'll go direct to Mida. Save a little gas. And, and we're above the clouds, look at that, it's a beautiful thing. Let's go into our showcase cam and do uh, this guy right here for a little bit. Look at the wing, a little bit of ice on the wing, but we've got the heat on, so it should dissipate here as we're above the clouds now. What are we looking at in terms of time and route? About an hour, 36 minutes, but we're not a cruise yet. We're going to get faster as we get higher. We should have a pretty solid tailwind on our way over to Telluride uh, this evening.
Let's make sure we have our altimeter set 2992 above flight level 180, which we do now. Delta 1176, from right to right left, we're going to land. Some good controlling by this controller right now, I must say. Sounds calm, cool, and collected, very professional. He's even working the multiple frequencies, can't have can't be mad about that. Our Four next Mike frequency. Charlie, climb maintain level 370. 370 for Mike Charlie. To 370. 370 is set, chat. Yeah, that's our top. Or that's our cruise, rather. And we are well on our way to Tyrad this evening. Yep, we're taking this up to flight level 370, Candy Monster. This thing can go all the way up to 45, I believe, in real life. You the route back, uh, to go Good fixings, thanks for coming in today. Direct from to this Good to see you, buddy. Hope everybody's enjoying their weekend. Got a little bit of flight sim action for you right now. Flight Sim 2020. Are you declaring emergency at this time? We are on our way to Telluride, Colorado. Let's see if we can get ourselves a bit of an interesting approach into there on the RNAV 27. No worries, you're not. You're the only one in that uh, piece of airspace, so now if you're declaring the emergency, I can do it for you with me, no problem. This controller is really good, Chad. I can tell just by the way he's talking to the aircraft, how common collected he is, very precise. This is a very, very good air traffic controller right now that's on Oakland Center on Bad Center. Air 26, 24, no problem. Uh, fly heading one. Going zero, skiing, one yes sir. Eight, Going up to Telluride and get standby. some snow action. Exactly. Well, I'm not. The passengers that I'm carrying, the two passengers, they got their ski poles and their, you know, their skis and all their winter and stuff all 26, in the back. The altitude, and we're going to get them to their five, little the winter for, vacation. For A little bit of a little bit of turbulence as we're coming up here to 250. Nothing crazy though. Good looking land out here. I like that it's got the little winter hue in some spots from a little bit of snow. I love that this sim has seasons just on its own. Don't need anything to add on. It has the seasons built in. It's really, really, really is nice. Hopefully it's nice and snowy up by Telluride when we get there, chat. Got our, radar be happy the snow is up. Yeah, me too. I'm glad that uh, all that, as much as that freaking crazy rain and monsoon that kind of passed through my area on Christmas uh, Christmas Eve night into Christmas Day it was annoying because of the wind, and it actually knocked my power out for a little bit. Um, it uh, it got rid of all the snow. Thank God. So right now there is no white stuff on the ground by me, and I am perfectly okay with that. It can very, very, very much happily stay that way. For all I care. No more snow would be great for the rest of the winter. I'm fine with that. I just don't like it at all, chat. Not for me. And here, let's take a look at Vatsim while we're still climbing here. Like I said, as, unless someone signs off, so hopefully everyone stays online, that'd be awesome. We'll see. Denver Center's been on for a bit. By the time we get there, you might consider popping off. But uh, right now, we've got Oakland Center. Salt Lake just signed on, so we'll probably have him for a little bit. Or LA. I don't know which one it's going to pass through. I think it's Salt Lake. But if not, then we also have LA Center here, too. He's been on for four hours, though, so we'll see if he stays. And then Denver Center is online. So we'll see what happens. As it stands right now, we're fully covered on ATC. Hopefully it stays that way. See, I'm okay without snow in winter, Kitty Monster. I'm not a big cold weather guy, personally. We got three, four inches Christmas Eve, but it's been melting. Just to put it on our neck of the woods. I gotcha. Well, at least it's starting to melt.
1136, join uh, Alpha to the ramp. Have a good one. Get it at 2624 in your luck. At 596, open the center on here. At 596, are you R-NAV and RVSM equipped? False alarm on the snow. Oh, well, that's kind of a bummer there, buddy. Oh, look, it already switched to Mach for us here. We're just going to go to vertical speed at this point for the rest of the way in the climb. We'll go uh, 1,500 feet a minute the rest of the way here. Up to our 370. So it almost looks like we're going to have to go at 1,000 feet a minute. The way the airplane is still slowing down here a bit. Make sure I've got her maxed out into climb. I'm pretty sure I do. I think she's at the deep, the climb D10 here. Come on, girl. You can do a little bit better than that. It still shows that it has the snow on it, even though I do have the, the heat on. It's another thing that the, the sim still hasn't gotten right yet. Alright, you got a little Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer going okay, on at the so Cinnabon, I like that. Okay, you filed for it. So with uh, Ludo, this is a modified version of the stock CJ4. This is the uh, working title beta uh, modification for the default citation CJ4. I think it's on 0 0.8.3 is the current beta. So it is technically the default CJ4, but it's really not because it is, it is modded. And it's modded so that it actually works and functions more or less like the actual airplane should, at least in terms of the FMS and all that stuff, which is what we were looking for and what we were hoping for uh, for something like this. So uh, I don't know if they fixed the fuel or anything like that, but they fixed the FMS, it, VNAV capable, the NAV all works good. It, it's been a joy to fly uh, ever since they've updated it, so I'm really happy with it, and uh, hopefully they'll continue to improve it. Red nose Delilah, <laughs> except it's got the nose in the wrong spot because her nose is sticking way out to the bottom right there. The red nose ended up kind of covering her face a little bit there. It's kind of it's still kind of funny though. Oh, and unfortunately, Denver Center has hey, gone offline, chat, so we've lost our ATC for Telluride, it looks like now. Not the end of the world, but it is what it is. Maybe someone will pop on between now and then, you never know. And I thought I'd say that's a question. Big answer for you, Bravo, Sierra, Romeo, three. It's been fairly smooth so far up at altitude here. I say as we start to get a little bit of chop right there. <laughs> yeah, I get the point. Definitely. Ugh. 
Twitch wasn't smart enough to recognize where her nose was, that's all. That's Twitch's fault. <laughs> so we're moving right along here. Hour and 14 minutes, it says, and I haven't even gotten up to my cruise speed level and off, so we're probably looking like at about an hour. Uh, hour and 10 minutes to uh, get to tell you right here. We do have an alternate of Eagle, just case, K E G E. But uh, I'm not thinking we're going to need Eagle. I'm thinking we're going to be just fine with uh, getting into Telluride. Right now, Telluride is wind calm, 10 miles, broken 3,000. Um, That's 596. We need, for the RNAV going into, and I can get rid of the Reno stuff here, for the RNAV approach, we need at least 1,603 miles. And that's the lowest that it can go. So we need 1,603 miles. So overcast 3,000 right now is doable. That's you got room Mike there. Early contact Salt Lake Center 13, correction, 120.27, 20, 20, 20, 20. 12027 for Mike Charlie. Have a great night. You too. Salt Lake Center, good evening. Citation 124, Mike Charlie is 360 for 370. Citation 124, Mike Charlie, Salt Lake Center, welcome. Altitude. 360 for 370, chat, and I feel welcomed. bit of breaks in the clouds here, but definitely broken overcast ceiling is probably the most of the rest of the way to uh, tell you right here. So I'm looking at Sky Vector. Got ourselves a nice tailwind here, chat. 99 knots, knots pretty much down right down the pipe. Take that to the bank. We're going to haul some butt over to tell you right this evening. Kool-Aid Jammer 07, zero seven. thanks for coming in today, my friend. Good to see you, sir. Lots of flying club folk in the chat tonight. Always, always love to see it. How much I got the throttle with the tailwind? I've just got it basically right to the detent with the climb, and I'm going to leave it in that climb detent until it captures and the speed picks up. When we start to pick up our speed, then I'll pull it into the cruise detent. Um, usually the headwind or tailwind is not going to make too much of a difference and how much throttle that you have in for your indicated airspeed. Um, it's really not going to make a huge difference uh, usually um, in terms of that. It's just a matter of the ground speed. Obviously if you have a huge tailwind you're going to have a faster ground speed and if you have a huge headwind you're going to have a slower ground speed. But for the most part it really doesn't affect your indicated airspeed and your throttle position more in that case. Usually an airplane with a FADEX is going to do all that for you. So we're going to leave it and climb for now while it speeds up. When it gets a little bit closer to uh, its 0.78, we'll bring the power back into the cruise detent. Titanium Druid, good to see you, sir. Thank you for coming in today. Merry Christmas to you, Titanium Druid. I haven't seen you in a little bit. Hope you had a great Christmas. Happy holidays to you and your family. Glad to hear that, sir, and thank you very kindly. Good to have you aboard tonight on our CJ4. Find a Telluride. We're starting to get closer to our speed. We're not there yet, but I am going to put us back in now into the cruise detent. So you see CRU right here, cruise. I'll let that stay on the max of the cruise for now. If we get a little bit close to the red barber pole there, then I will uh, pull the throttle back, obviously. I'll try not to hit that overspeed. 
beeper because it is kind of annoying. Delta 315, runway 1, keep clicking take off. We're gonna start getting a better idea of exactly how much time we got left now that we're coming up to speed here. It looks like we got about an hour to get to uh, Telluride. That's not too bad. Be a little bit of a short stream tonight with just the one link Telluride if we got about an hour to go. No, so yeah, Kenny Monster, that's not gonna affect so Mach or anything like that uh, at all. Uh, so that's not gonna make a change. Yeah. All that's gonna do is increase or decrease your ground speed, but Mach isn't just a set speed. Mach is like a whole different, it depends on the atmospheric conditions. It depends on the temperature, it depends on the pressure. Um, a lot of different factors go into figuring out like what the actual speed of sound is, because the speed of sound isn't just a specific number. Um, so that's why Mach always varies and indicated speed's always going to vary. But the wind is not going to be a factor on that. Whether you have a huge tailwind or a huge headwind, that's not going to have any much, uh, not any factor on you whatsoever. You're always going to have the same uh, max uh, speed that you have here. In our case, we're going to be getting close to like 0 0.77, 0 0.78 for our cruise speed. Yes, this is the working title CJ4 mod. I think it's the 0 0.8.3, whatever the most current ver beta version is, is what I'm flying tonight. Number nine, Romeo Victor, what's your clip? She's flying too? smooth. Not JK, thanks for coming in today. We're getting pretty close to our barber pole here, so I'm going to pull back on this. We'll try and see what uh, 97.5 gives us in terms of speed. We're not in a huge hurry to get to tell you right tonight. So if it's a little bit slower than our max speed, that's going to be perfectly fine. We'll save a little gas. Save Number the environment. Niner, Romeo Victor, are you RVS incapable? A little bit of turbulence here and there, though. Call it intermediate light shot for now. Number nine, Romeo Victor, Roger, I'm Let's up take a look and see what our passengers are Camp seeing. Up. Yeah. Just a little bit of light chop, nothing crazy, nothing that's going to cause anyone any discomfort. Ha! <laughs> Need to get good in sauce before I put seat. That was very funny. Don't worry, we're not going to get there that fast. We still got what? what does it say 57 minutes? Is that what it's saying that we got here? You still got about an hour to get yourself good and toasted before you go to the slopes, there, buddy. We'll be in the Salt Lake Center airspace for a while, and again, Denver signed off, which is unfortunate. Hopefully between now and then we will get some ATC going in Telluride, but if not, we'll have to do it ourselves. Perfectly fine, we have the approach. The approach goes right off of that Cones VOR anyway, so it's pretty simple stuff. Just see how bumpy or how crazy it potentially is getting into Telluride. Remember, we need 1,600 at least to get in. Is the lowest we can go on the approach if we look right here. The bottom is 1,603 miles. Right now at Telluride, the weather is 10 miles and broken at 3,000. So right now we're good. Right now we can definitely make it in um, as long as that holds. But we'll see what happens when we get closer because we got an hour for the weather to change. And the weather can change very rapidly, as everyone knows, in the Colorado mountains. Somebody else uh, got stepped on taken. So far, the plane's doing everything that I want her to, though. Horizon 2436, runway 12, taxi via. So hopefully she uh, keeps Delta doing that. Alpha. This is a pretty long leg between uh, Mike Victor Alpha to the Erta intersection. Getting a little bit more turbulence up here than I was expecting at 370. Rex Weather Force right here, by the way. I don't think this is really going to tell me. It shows me the winds here. It doesn't really tell me whether or not it's going to be like turbulent or not. It's a little bit more tailwind if we're at the higher up go. You can see the interpolation here. So I think we prefer to stay at the higher altitude for that. But, uh... If it ends up staying pretty bumpy like it is right now, then we might consider going down to uh, a lower altitude. I do think I still actually have the belts on, but we'll go ahead and take those off for now. It's not super bumpy. 
Honestly, I'd be fine having the belts off unless it was like really crazy bumpy right now. We'll worry about putting the belts on again when we get a little bit closer. So you can feel free to move about the cabin there, passengers. An occasional bump's not really going to deter me there. Look at you guys with your 757 spy seatbelts. Another very good streamer on Twitch, 757 Spy. There's so many of them. There's just too many to count in terms of good Twitch streamers when it comes to Flight Sim. Uh, right now, the ones online, Sim Caesar's doing his air races that he does every Sunday. Those are always fun to watch. Uh, he's an excellent, excellent, excellent entertainer if you're not already familiar with Sim Caesar. Um, we got that live fly guy, the one that gave us the random raid the one time, but I've watched a few of his streams and he's uh, pretty good. Ground Point Niners controlling Minneapolis. He's always good as well. Canadian Captain Mustache, good friend of ours. He was a flying club member and I think he technically still is, but I don't think he's done any Vatsim in a long time. Um, Fly787 is an actual 787 cap, retired 787 captain. He does some flight sim stuff as well. Agent B7, a lot of you in the stream know Agent B7. She looks like she's got something going on as well. She's in a Citation 2, Scottsdale to Las Vegas. And a couple other guys online as well. But plenty, plenty, plenty of good flight sim streamers. And a few of them are on a line tonight along with me. Appreciate you guys deciding to stick with me, though, for your ride on the CJ4 into Telluride. We've got about 50-something minutes before things start to get really good as we try and get in. And you know what? While I'm thinking about it, I almost forgot. We should probably turn the landing rate meter on, chat. Let's get the Gs going. Boom. Gs. That way, if when we do make a landing, we can see what uh, the feet per minute was and all that stuff. I almost forgot about that. I'm glad I remembered so that we can see what my one landing is going to be worth. be ready to go at the end or need to run up. I think if I ever start streaming, I'll be doing inverted tower buzzing on 52, man. Hey, yeah. Everyone's got their own thing. I try to keep all of my flying on the stream very professional. For the most part. Because I do very much enjoy my profession. But yeah. I'm sure there would be a hell of a lot of very good entertainment value for you doing that too, Mr. Titanium Review. It's certainly something that I would want to watch you do. I want to see if you can pull it off without dying. <laughs> Bag three sixty-seven. So, like center radar contact three zero miles south, Tankville Vortex, and confirm through level three four zero. Yeah, we're at Bennett 37. We had a step uh, step climb to three four zero a while back. Uh, I don't know if it was updated in our flight plan though. I got you updated now, thank you very much. Thank you. Good looking bird. And thank God a functional one too. That was the big thing. It's so nice now that she functions properly. With that working title mod. Right, 2436, runway 306, there for take off. If you don't already have it, just Google Citation CJ4 working title. And download this sucker. Get this update into your flight sim, Microsoft Flight Sim community folder. Because it really, really does actually finally make this thing function properly. It's really the first general aviation jet on this sim that, you know, functions as it should. I also enjoy the 152 mod and that Turbo Bonanza mod as well. Those are both really good mod modifications to the default aircraft as well. And make them a little bit more realistic too. But I think the CJ4 is my favorite so far. I've definitely had my most fun... Uh, doing the flying in this thing. Yeah, so the, unfortunately that's one of the things that they haven't fixed yet, is the icing in this game is really... Because I have the... Uh, the wing and engine anti-ice on, the pitot heat's on, so it's all just a visual thing. It's not actually affecting the way the airplane's flying, it's just the visual, it just shows it's still there. Even though we're not in actual icing, so that, that's a bit of a simism uh, right there with the ice. Two guys back here named Harry and Lloyd, they say they have to go to Aspen to speak to a Miss Samsonite. I believe that is Dumb and Dumber that you're referencing. Not 100%, but I'm pretty confident that you're referencing Dumb and Dumber. They are good fixings. Try and, hopefully I know my movie right there. 
Carrot 3528 is west of the Delta Gate with information is off on board. There you go. Alright. So I'm not totally culturally that. illiterate, really just a little bit. On, and he's going to need that same information. Give him a call on 119.05 and I'll talk to you soon. Just a little bit, chat. Not crazy. Not, not over the top. Ooh, it was a pretty good bump of turbulence right there. Delta 315 clear directed, boy. Still nothing really that crazy, though. Got plenty of fuel. So we're not super worried about that. And we've got our about... 248 miles to go here, it looks like, till we get to Erda. Then we've got Cones, Setma, and that's on the approach there. So we'll take a look at that approach again for those that are just coming in. We're doing the RNAV GPS Zulu Runway 9 into Telluride. Uh, so it is an RNAV. We're going to go right from Cones direct to the final approach for Setma. So 13,000 at Codes, 12,9 at Setma, then down to... to uh, and we have to round this up, chat. Since we can't actually do 10,600, it's going to be 10,640. It's going to be 10,700. So 10,700 uh, is what we're going to round up to for the bottom altitude. And as long as we can get down to 10.7 and see the runway, we'll be able to make a nice landing into uh, Telluride there. But uh, otherwise, the, the missed approach is going to be a bit sketch. This approach is climbing right turn of 15,000 feet direct to the Cones VOR and hold. And it's a tight turn. They tell you, limit your approach, missed approach, excuse me, to 180 knots. The reason why you don't want to go above 180 knots on the missed approach is because you want to keep that turn radius down. That turn radius needs to stay down and tight and you need to make sure you have a good climb going as well because you still have this little mountain right here and if the turn radius gets too wide you're going to end up going into these big guys right over here. So that's why they keep that speed below 180 on the mist because you have to do a, quite a tight turn to kind of get back out into that valley and get over to the Cones VOR. So it would be a bit of a sketchy missed approach if we had to do it. So, hopefully we'll be able to get in on the first shot. Let's see it with my heading bug. I haven't done that in a minute. Keep the heading bug centered just in case. You never know. Turbulence is a bit of a wind shift there, so we did get a little bit of change in our speed, so I had to adjust throttle. I hope you get it as well too, good fixings, because then I'm going to have to find you and give you some traffic. ZID, Indianapolis Artec. Well, that's because he's... A so, Kenny, he's a Columbus area native, so that makes sense because uh, CMH, which is Port Columbus Airport, is in the uh, uh, Indy Artec airspace. EBM Niner Romeo Victor, clear direct to airfield. Start, is, start, yeah, date. Okay. Well, looks like I'm going to have to pay a visit to Dayton pretty soon. So look, we even have our little top of descent nugget out here for that 13,000 feet at the uh, Cones VOR, which is very nice. So we'll be able to just throw 13,000 right in here and let the airplane do the descent for us. <coughs> Should be able to control the Ohio State University Airport, which I've been to many times. I actually, when I went to, uh, I used to be on a, in college, I was on the Nat National Intercollegiate Flying Association, so the NIFA flight team for Farmingdale when I was in college. Um, they only did it my senior year, but we went to uh, Nationals that year, the one year that I did it at my senior year, and the competition for Nationals was held at the Ohio State University Airport. It was held at KOSU. 
That was back in 2010, 2010. So I spent uh, all, like a whole week and a half at the Ohio State University Airport doing a bunch of flying competitions with the uh, NIFA team there. Strategic trolling is watching. I do some ATC as well on this channel, mostly Kennedy Tower stuff. I haven't done ATC on this in a little bit though. Probably get back to it soon. In fact, my next stream will probably be something ATC related unless I find something good to do in the sim. I have been very much abusing this uh, CJ4 on the stream though. Right. I know that. Right, the 2436, roger. Clear to Missoula International Airport. Some mountains over here. Uh, by a radar vector direct. We're inching uh, our way closer to our destination to tell you, Rod. And uh, stay reason for divert. Oh, wrong button. Hit the wrong button. Did the LaGuardia event this morning to uh, New York 1, took a wrong turn to Owlboy. Hey, Ed, Kenny. The more you do it, the better you get, my man. You don't have to hold your head in shame for any reason. But that was good of you to give the traffic to those guys, especially because they were doing that LaGuardia staff of 30 hours. You had a bunch of New York Tech controllers rotating and doing shifts at LaGuardia for 30 hour, for the last 30 hours. That just ended a couple, that actually just ended at 7 o'clock Eastern, so just about an hour ago that ended. They did the 30 hour run. Now, I did not participate because, well, I do not control LaGuardia at New York Artec. That's the only airport that I don't do any of the tower stuff in. I can do uh, the tower at Kennedy, Newark, and Philadelphia, as well as all the minor facilities, of course. But LaGuardia is the only one that I am not certified for yet. And uh, so I was not able to help out with that 30-hour event. That's fine with me, though. I had other stuff going on today, so I didn't really feel like being up super late at night. Actually had a nice date this afternoon. Went pretty well. Hoping for good things. You never know, chat. Fingers crossed. I think it went well, at least. But well, time will tell. Horizon 2436, you want the ILS runway 1 2, correct? Dating during COVID doesn't hear really. So the city, um, New York City has some pretty strict bans right now, but I'm a little bit north of the city, and where I'm at, they're uh, still allowing indoor dining as of right now. So uh, we actually went and had a nice lunch. Yeah, it's definitely not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, like I said, thankfully, at least for now, for now, the restaurants, indoor dining is still open in my area. That could change, though. It's just a matter of time before Governor Cuomo probably pulls the plug on that. I don't really have very high thoughts about Governor Cuomo in New York, but I am not going to say anything further than that because I do not ever want to get into politics on this stream. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they start to shut more stuff down soon, to be honest. But I'll take advantage while I can. Did have a nice first date today. Hoping for more. I thought she was very sweet. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Verizon 2436, are you able to take it from, uh, am I? Fingers crossed, chat. Wish me luck. It is definitely not the easiest time in the world to date. At all. No doubt about that. But it's I'm going to do my best. At this moment, See what so I'll happens. I'll take you a little bit further on your current track and give you a left turn 180. And uh, then you direct that. You can join the arc. Delilah will be jealous. Delilah's always jealous. Seattle Center, Travis 3528, climbing through 8,000. Defend and maintain 11,000. Lost track of what Minnesota's at. No, we shut down a week ago. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, Thank you very much. 3528 with you climbing through 8,800. Block. Delta 1772 after Carter. Descend via the Nordic fixed arrival. Expect the ILS. Runway. Really shouldn't actually say block chat. Yeah, air traffic controllers don't like it when you say block on the frequency, so I don't know why I just did that. I never do that in real life. 
controllers in real life hate when people say block. They really that just pisses them off more, honestly. At least from the controllers that I know. Oh, because they're gonna know whether or not the transmission got through or not, Kenny Monster. You know, they don't, they don't need more people to jump on and say block because it's just gonna take up the airways. If the controller needs to repeat the instruction because the pilot didn't hear it, then the controller will repeat the instruction. It's not something that needed to be, uh, you know, broadcast out loud by someone else. Uh, it, sometimes it could just add more conflict because that controller might be quick and might be going right back and saying it again. And if someone says blocked, well, then he's just blocking him again. So for the most part, I, I, controllers don't really want that. Uh, at least, like I said, based on the ones that I've talked to, it could be different depending on the controller, but the left uh, we're getting bumped around here pretty good, aren't we, Chad? At or above 1 cleared ILS Zulu, runway 1 to approach. Go ahead and put the seatbelt sign on there because it is getting a little bit on the bumpy side here, a little bit of moderate turbulence. Light but occasional moderate right now at this altitude. I can't remember what you were uh, calling yourself. What's the call sign? Foster Global 817, leave my airspace to the west. Radar services are terminated. Frequency change proof, yeah. Not sure what lake this is, but we're flying over it. Let's see if I can go on the sectional and maybe pick it out here. There's probably... Does it kind of look like that? I'm not sure. This could be Fish Lake right here. Fish Lake, possibly, that we're flying by. Um, I think so. I think that looks like, because then there's a reservoir behind it. So I think we're right about here, chat, right near Fish Lake. Uh, Fish Lake Mountains, all in that area. So that's... I think that's roughly where we're at right now. So we're getting pretty close to our final destination here. Maybe. Dave Rendon, thank you for coming in today. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you for giving him that shout out, Kenny Monster. Plot the book, The Complete Private Pilot, flipped through it and thought it was awesome. Started actually reading it now two weeks later. I just finished chapter two. Hey. Always good to read, my man. I need to get back into reading more. When I had hurt my shoulder, I was doing a lot of reading, and now that I'm healthy, I've kind of stopped. I should really get back into reading again. I have a couple of other aviation books that I got lying around. I'll show you some of the ones I read, actually, because they're sitting right above me here. Hang on, chat. So this is probably one of the best aviation books that I've read so far, right here, guys. And it's uh, Top Gun. Uh, it's written by one of the uh, founders of the Top Gun program. Um, his name was uh, Dan Pedersen. And uh, I, I absolutely love this book. So if you're looking for a good aviation book, you like military aviation, you like that Top Gun, you know, it does kind of also talk about the movie and stuff like that a little bit in here, but it's really mostly about how the program was created. Uh, some great stories in there, so uh, definitely one that you guys should probably check out. Delta seventeen seventy two after anti reduced speed two one zero nine. Dave Rendon, yes sir. Uh, this is the working title CJ four zero point eight point three. I believe that's the most current beta that I have installed, and I've had yeah, I've been to say I have had no issues right with then. it, but it is definitely usable now. Every now and then you get an occasional glitch here and there. Uh, that was a big little thing of turbulence right there, chat. Look at that. That thing knocked us all the way off our, uh... Wow. We're gonna leave the seatbelt sign on, to, I think, for the rest of the way. That was a nice little bump there. That rolled us a little bit. But the VNAV works. Um, the FMS is functioning properly as it should and all that. So, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a functioning sim now. And the VNAV, we're gonna be using the VNAV to descend here when we get a little bit closer to the top of descent. But, yeah, the VNAV is functioning as it should. 
We have the 13,000 feet at uh, Cones intersection that I'll, we'll descend to via the VNAV. United 268, um, radio check. What did I want to do here? I do want to get start to, now we're starting to get closer. I'm going to get all the approach speeds and everything set into there. Uh, so let's go ahead and see the weather at Telluride. Oh boy, Chad, it's getting interesting now. Remember, we need at least 1,600 feet to get in. Actually, 1,700 feet to be more specific. We're at broken yeah, 2,300. Yeah, uh, and down to three 200, miles, and the minimum is three miles, Chad. So we are getting pretty close to the bare bones minimums now. This is, might start to get a little bit interesting. Again, we have a diversion airport of uh, Eagle. Uh, which is, where is Eagle? Where are you? Are you up here? You're up here. Eagle. Eagle County is our divert chat if we have to. So it might be a little bit interesting getting into Telluride right now. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But right now we got minus five and the wind is calm. So let's go ahead and do wind calm. Yeah, contact. Three zero miles left. Delta minus five. Level three seven zero. Welcome aboard. It is snowing, so we're going to have to go with a wet runway. Uh, Anti-ice is going to have to be on. Interesting that it doesn't let me click it. That's fine. We'll send those speeds. It's not going to make much of a difference in terms of the speeds there anyway. So now the speeds are set and they should be up and in the uh, on our board here. When we get on the approach, they'll show up. So that's all set now. Yeah, and we'll see what that weather well, does because... Uh, we contacted two different times about 10 minutes ago. Things might get interesting because it's getting tight. Yeah, may have been having a calm issue. Coaster days, Royality. Uh, Thanks for coming in today. My CJ4 mod just CTDs every time now. Yeah, I haven't had any CTD issues yet. So uh, I don't know why you might be having those issues, my man. I apologize for that. Um, I've had no issues with the uh, working, the most recent working title beta. Our altitude is set for 360, sir. But yeah, the pucker okay, factor you, uh, no, might right, actually uh, be starting to get a little bit higher on that approach into Telluride because we are starting to get pretty close to the uh, bare bone minimums on that RNAV approach. So stay tuned because we might have some action here in, uh, oh, uh, what are we looking at, 28, about half an hour. We might be looking at some serious action. By the way, Stefan Norps, I apologize for not getting into this soon, but thank you for the follow, man. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming in today. About four minutes ago, you followed the channel, and I do appreciate that. I was just doing a little bit too much talking right there. I did not mean to forget you. But oh, this should be fun. I hope it holds because I do like to do this in one shot. But uh, otherwise, if we have to divert to Eagle, we have to divert to Eagle. We'll see what the sim gives us. Eric Flight, thank you for the. 500 bits. Almost like you're returning the favor, because I'm pretty sure I gave you 500 bits yesterday, or something in that neighborhood. Might have been a 1,000. Either way, thank you for the bits. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in today. Always a pleasure to have you, sir. Really appreciate that 500-bit donation to the channel. Mr. Eric Flight completed his uh, long cannonball run yesterday in the Cessna 172 all the way from... I don't remember what the start and finish point was. I think it was New York to L.A., um, and he did the whole thing in one sitting in the 172. I think he made five or six stops, he said. Um, yeah, crazy man he was. He was streaming all the way until four something in the morning last night. So, uh, he was a crazy, crazy son of a gun. So, uh, Everyone, make sure you uh, give him a follow over there. He's another very, very good general aviation streamer and a real-world private pilot as well. So he's got a lot of knowledge that he can instill on you guys. So make sure you give a follow to his channel. Uh, S S Zeno plays. S Zeno plays. That's I'm terrible with Twitch names, but thank you for the follow. I appreciate it, sir. That top of descent little circle is right coming in there, chat. A little less than 100 miles out. So we're going to be doing some work here fairly soon. Uh, when we get a little bit closer to it, I'll set that 13,000 feet for the altitude at uh, Cones um, and let the VNAV do the work. Gave all the credit to the autopilot. I'm on the autopilot right now, but... You so can't not do that without a little bit of autopilot. Like I, there's just no, I, first of all, I couldn't do that on my own at all. I would, I, I have, 
I would be so just exhausted at a point where I just couldn't keep going. So kudos on you for actually making it the whole way, but, um... Damn. Verizon 2436, runway 1, 2, clear to land. You're a crazy, crazy man. Again, those bumps are kind of messing around with our speed here, so I'm going to pull the power back just a little bit. Again, we don't need to be hauling so much ass going in Telluride. There's still no ATC, unfortunately, at Telluride, which is kind of a bummer. We're going to lose our ATC here very shortly with nobody having come on the center. And, uh, uh to cover Denver, and nobody's covering that Telluride area, so... That is kind of a bummer chat, I will not lie, um, but uh, it is what it is, we'll have to make our way in on the, the Unicoms anyway. Can you, again later, can you whisper me the mod? I can send it in the chat right now, let me see if I can find the link. Um, give me one second. Here it is, yep, I will put the link into the chat right now. There is the working title, most recent beta. Yep, and not JK's got the same link there. Very good. Yep, you're all set. So you're just going to want to download Number that and stick it in the community the folder. And that'll give you all the modifications you need for the default Park citation CJ4. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, it works great. I love it. I've very much enjoyed flying this thing on the network now. So uh, I would highly recommend it. And this is already like my fifth stream using it in the last couple of weeks. Go and see what our passengers are seeing Denver, in the back Friday, right now. Boom. Yeah, definitely worth a try, Dave. I think you'll enjoy it. Double I know um, uh, Slant Alpha Adventures actually made like a full video tutorial on how to use it. If you go to his Solar YouTube Planning channel. Down. Um, then you can find that video. It kind of helps you to, in terms of setting up the FMS and all those kind of things, if you're looking for something like that, Dave. Okay, cross, uh, Carter yeah, so Slant Alpha Adventures on his YouTube has uh, uh, he uploaded a video there, if you want to check that out. South, uh, is, uh, I got information golf. Is that not correct? Still need to try that 152 mod. Yes, the 152 mod is also good. So the 152 no, mod is no longer this, uh, the 152X. Like it's probably. been merged with a different okay, group. Yeah, we have information it's the same mod, but it's just been merged with a different group, and it's been renamed. And I don't know what the rename is. I haven't looked at it yet, because I haven't updated it in a, in a little bit. But I'll have to check that out pretty soon now that it's got a new name working forward and a new, new uh, I guess, a new group that's kind of working on it and updating it. So... I know, uh, once again, also, if you're in the Slant Alpha Venture Discord, I think he was talking about that earlier today in his Discord, about that uh, new, the changes to the 152 mod in the, the company, or the group of people, I guess, Number that's four, working Mike on Charlie, it now. Number four, Mike Charlie, Radar services are terminated, frequency change approved. Frequency change approved for Mike Charlie, good night. And that's what we're waiting for, chat. We have lost our ATC coverage, so we're going to go to the Unicom now, and if someone signs on to Denver, then they'll send us contact me, but in the meantime, we're going the rest of the way on Unicom. Tell you right, it is an uncontrolled field, uh, but uh, it would have still been nice to have the at least the, the approach and all the instructions, and you know, having a call to cancel the IFR on the ground and all that stuff to make it more realistic. But Batsim is a voluntary thing, so it is what it is. Oh, I'm losing some speed here. Now that we came out of the turbulence, I can pick that power back up, get my speed back here. We call that V-Waste, Chet. V-Waste, when you're not going as fast as you could, or you're going slower than the speed you're supposed to. V-Waste. So let's go ahead and pick that speed back up. For those that are just joining the stream, thank you for coming in today. We are uh, getting pretty close to the top of the set here on our way into Telluride, and the weather is going to be tight getting into Telluride. So it should be uh, nothing if not entertaining 
um, on the way in. Uh, right now, the weather at Telluride is ceiling broken 2,300 and three miles visibility. The minimums on the approach, we've discussed this a few times, is we round this up 10,700. So we're talking about 1,700 and three miles when we round up. There's uh, not a whole heck of a lot of space right now for what we got. We're right at the minimum for the Viz. Um, actually, I've been looking at the wrong... Oh, no, Category C. Yep, so Category C is what we are, the faster planes. So, yeah, definitely... Uh, I don't remember if... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're Category C. I don't, I don't remember if we're B or C here, actually. Nah, I don't remember. Either way, we're pretty close on the uh, minimums there in terms of what we need. So it'll be, uh, it'll be entertaining. I'm pretty confident this is Category C. Those categories, by the way, are based on speed, uh, chat. And I should know them. I should know what the different categories are, but I'd be lying if I said I did right now. It's something that I'm going to have to look up again, I'll be honest. Don't know why I can't think of it right now. Anyways. We're in clear skies right now, but when we get closer, it's going to start to tighten up quite a bit. As long as the uh, sim portrays it accurately, that is, of course. But you never know. It's always a toss-up whether active sky is going to work properly or not. Or, I'm sorry, not active sky. Rex Weather Force here. Keep our fingers crossed that it does. All right, so we're starting to get pretty close to our top of descent, chat. So what I'm going to do, since we're not talking any ATC and we're going to do this on our own, I'm just going to set one three thirteen thousand is set, and I'm going to hit the VNAV button, and we're going to let the VNAV take it when the time comes. Should be pretty soon. Starting to see some white caps on those mountains. Probably be a lot more snow on the ground in this area right now in real life. Um, and the sim may be able to pick that a little bit better when we get closer to Telluride, hopefully. Because it is nice that the sim kind of has the seasons built in. It's not perfect, but uh, it does a fairly good job. And I'm wondering when they're going to start putting those clouds in Rex Weather Force. Because I know there's got to be some. We're not going to be staying clear in a million forever here. see what happens chat hopefully the weather actually works with Rex usually it's pretty good but time will tell I might just also be dropping a handful of frames to my freaking spectrum internet sorry guys if I do end up dropping frames and lagging a little bit, I do apologize. It looks like it's not a whole lot right now, but every now and then I'm dropping a frame here and there, so sorry about that. Can't get a break right now with the Spectrum Internet the last few days. I really can't. But we're about, oh, 20 miles from our top of descent here, so we're going to be making moves pretty soon. Selling us, we're only about 15 minutes out from the field. It'll be a little bit longer than that once we start to slow up uh, and get set up for the approach. Looks like uh, club member Zach Bartig has decided to... He's traveling a little bit behind us, got a little bit of late start, but he is joining us on the Reno to Telluride flight right there. He's on his way over. Virtually a safe flying club member. So happy to have him join us. Again, 
Looks like he got a bit of a late start, but he's making his way to Telluride as well. Always nice to have some company. I still streaming, guys? Are you guys still seeing me? You're getting really quiet in the chat, making me nervous here. speed here. Oh, and we got our VPAT started. That's why I'm over speed and we started our DSM. Let me get the power out. I was looking at the fact that my stream is dropping a few frames here and there and I got distracted. And uh, we're, we're starting our descent. VNAV is taking it. We're on our way down to 1313,000. It's a bit bumpy up here. you got those seatbelts on because it's going to be a seems like it's going to be a pretty bumpy ride the rest of the way here chat it's looking that way Starting to see a little bit of snow on the mountains here now. Alright, we don't need to be going this slow, chat. I'm getting a little bit too slow here. Let's pick the speed back up. See our little banana right here. Starting to get close to ETL. Try and hold about 300 knots here.
And so we've already talked about the approach and everything is set up in the box, so we're pretty much good to go there. Nothing really needed to be added there. Uh, now it's just a matter of getting the job done and getting a landing and a tire ride and seeing if we'll, we'll see if the weather is going to actually comply or not. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, as we get a little bit closer here that uh, Rex Weather Force is going to shape up. Get too fast on me, girl. You can slow back up again. Take six. Thanks for coming in today. Good to see you, sir. We're on our descent into Telluride. You can see the mountain starting to come up in front of us here. Ah, ski trip indeed. Yep, I've got two passengers in the back that were looking for a little bit of snow action, so we're taking them on in. I know Good Fixin said he was getting all boozed up and ready to go for his ski trip, so hopefully he's getting nice and toasty back there as we start to make our descent. And yeah, it has been a while since I've seen you, Mr. Take Six. Thank you for coming in today once again. Always good to see familiar faces. Go outside for one second, and I end up overspeeding here a little bit. Oh well. We're getting pretty close, aren't we, Chad? About six minutes out. Uh, if you guys want to start putting landing rate guesses in, now wouldn't be a bad time. Because I'm going to be pretty focused on getting this airplane down and in for the approach. So uh, if you want to start putting some landing rate guesses into the chat, now would be a good time to do it. My one and only landing of the evening in the CJ3 coming into Telluride here. We'll uh, see what kind of uh, kind of weather it's going to give us. Right now I'm not sure where this other force is working, so I'm actually going to restart it here, chat. It, to me it just doesn't seem like it's functioning as it should. Dave Rendon, thank you for the host. I appreciate it. That looks like it more like it should. Oh. And that looks more like it should in terms of the weather now with Rex Weather Force. And we're going to bring the speed back now because of it. That was a little bit of a sim simism right there, chat. Nothing to be worried about, though. We'll go ahead and get it back down here. See, we're starting to get closer to that overcast layer. You can see the weather at Telluride. Three miles light snow broken, 2,300. So right now we're still good enough to get in on the mins. We should probably really start slowing up as we get closer to cones. we got to really start slowing down for this approach. After cones, we got Setma only at 12,900, so we only have to descend an extra 100 feet after we get from cones to Setma before then going down to our 10,700 bottom altitude. So let's really start to crank down the uh, airspeed here. And yes, you guys, if now would be the time to get the landing rate predictions in. If you want to put a landing rate guess in, let's get it done now. No prizes, just pride on this stream, but pride is always a good thing. If you want to guess what my one and only landing rate is going to be this evening in the CJ4.
altitude. 14 for 13. And we are in the soup. Things should start to get interesting here now. All right, so we're past the east, or to past the cones. Again, we only need to go down an extra 100 feet. So I'm just going to go down to that 12,900 feet for Setma. And then from Setma then on down to our 10,700 feet, which is going to be our final, you know, it's going to be our misapproach altitude. So 12.9 until we get here to Setma. We can take the VNAV off. It's just out now. And we got to set 10.7. Oh. Altitude. Get back up there, airplane. I don't know what you're trying to do here. We're going to set that 10,700 now. Once we get re we're going to recapture this 129 for whatever reason decided to go down. And then once it gets to that 129 again, we'll set 107. And I should really be slowing down to configure this airplane as we get close here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get the flaps to 15 degrees. Final approach fix gear is coming down. Let's set our 107. We're there across Setma, so now we'll go down at 1,000 feet a minute and see if we can find the runway. Last call on the landing rate guesses because we are in it. Let's see if we can find this bad girl. We're 2,000 feet above the minimums. We're looking for a runway. Flaps full. We'll get right to our final approach speed here. Starting to get just the tiniest hint of ground contact already, which is a good sign. Oh yeah, it is definitely nice and snowy out here, chat. Right, look at that, runway in sight. So we've gotten through those clouds and the visibility is just good enough where we're able to see it. Altitude. So we do have the runway in sight. We'll let the airplane capture um, that altitude. So we're pretty much right on where we need to be. We're looking pretty good. So uh, again, last call for the landing rate guesses and baby. Looking sharp. We got the runway in sight, so the visibility is held out for us. The weather is held out just enough for us here. Excellent stuff. I'm going to go ahead and take the autopilot off, chat, and fly it by hand. Take the yaw damper off, too. I'm going to get rid of my flight director since we're purely visual now. I guess it doesn't let you get rid of the flight director, but that's fine. Getting a little bit low, so let me go ahead and correct that. And if for whatever reason we end up going back into the clouds, it will be an automatic misapproach. We will not mess around with that. If we end up getting back into the clouds for whatever reason, we will automatically shoot the misapproach. There's Telluride sitting right out there. A little bit bumpy right now on the ride in terms of quality, but not too bad. We're slightly low here, Mike. Let's get our nose up here. That's looking better. Pretty bumpy, actually. Yep, yeah, pucker factor's there, chat. 
it's a bit of a ride. Telluride traffic, citation for my trolley, a three mile final for runway nine or full stop, Telluride traffic. Should have been making those calls a lot sooner. I forgot for a minute that I was on the Vatsim network. Sorry about that. We are committed now, chat. We got the runway in sight. We're looking good. We are the only one here. I didn't hear anybody else on the Unicom telling me they were here, even though I gave my call. So let's see what happens. Al South, MIA, thanks for coming in today. Just in time to see me land. The citation here. Last call on those landing rate guesses. Got that little mountain to the left there. We have to make sure we clear. Going a little bit too fast. Let's pull the power back. Might as well just get the power all the way out at this point. Getting that little bit of snow action. Runway is a little on the hilly side. This plane loves to float, so we'll keep that nose semi down. Minus 136. Plenty of snow on the ground here in Telluride. This looks great, honestly, in the sim chat. Not gonna lie, this looks fantastic right now. 136 is the final number. We'll have to see what that compares to. I see that not JK had a minus 130 prediction, so that might be close to the uh, the winner there. We went ahead and made this taxiway very nicely, too. We'll go ahead and clear off here and pull into the GA ramp. That we even got a little bit of that light snow effect. We got plenty of snow in the area. Telluride traffic, citation one two four my trolleys, clear of runway nine or Telluride. We'll go ahead and give ourselves some nice princess parking over here, right by the main doors. Welcome to Telluride. Rob Valkyrie, yes it does. When I flew the Citation CJ3, that thing loved, and I mean absolutely loved to float. So that is, yes, that is very realistic. This, this, the, the CJ3, when I flew it, oh my god. You would have to tell yourself almost every time before landing, don't float, brakes are touchy, because the brakes were really touchy in that airplane too. So that was every time, every time before I did a landing uh, in the CJ3, I would literally always say, don't float, brakes are touchy. Just to remind myself, especially because I ended up going back and forth between that and uh, that Beach Jet Hawker 400 when I did that charter job. So it was always a good reminder to myself just to make sure I didn't float it. But let's go ahead into the showcase cam here um, and take a look at the uh, beautiful, beautiful Telluride Airport now that we're on the ground safe and sound. Engines are off. So this is pretty much exactly what it looks like. So they did a good job in terms of the handcrafting on this airport since this is one of the handcrafted airports in the sim. They did a magnificent job of getting the airport uh, accurate. Because, um, like I said, I have been here in real life. This was probably one of my favorite overnights was here in Telluride. Um, but it looks great with the snow. Look at that. That is phenomenal, chat. How good that looks. And we saw it, too, the whole way coming in on the approach. It really was just excellent. I mean, that was, you know, great in terms of the entertainment value for you guys. I'm glad that that all kind of worked out the way that it did. Um, we'll go a little bit deeper into the valley here, into where actual city of Telluride is. So 
So here's the actual uh, city of Telluride right here, chat, where I had the overnight. It was really nice overnight. I had it during the summer, though, so there was no snow on the ground. It was just all a bunch of hiking that we were doing, so we didn't have any of the snow. But look at that. The sim looks phenomenal. Oh, look at that. Look at this in the mountains with the light snow, with the visibility drop. You got all the snow on the ground because it's snowing in the area. Probably exactly what it would look like in real life right now. Maybe with just even a little bit more snow on the ground. But then we're coming back towards the airport and... Oh, it just looks superb. So when it comes to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, you can fault it on a lot of things. But the visuals is never one of them. It's always going to be a very 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 visually pleasing sim no doubt about it again the airport looks good we'll go back to where we were coming inbound on the approach and you guys were watching the approach so you guys saw exactly how good it looked on the way in we come through the clouds and saw the uh, the runway the way we did like that it was just it was pretty beautiful you know there's a reason why i enjoy this sim so much even with all of its flaws is because of stuff like that and the approach, look at the way the snow just looks in the mountains and everything. Gorgeous stuff, chat. Gorgeous stuff. Any place to go there for fun other than the skiing? Um, so when I, like I said, when I came here, it was in the summer. So really what I did was hike on a bunch of the trails. Uh, plenty of good bars and restaurants. Uh, really good nightlife there, honestly. Um, as well when I was there, so uh, it was just a great downtown overall. Probably one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been to in terms of the landscape, as you guys can see even just in the sim, um, just how good it looks in this area. I think this is somewhere over here, these are the Rocky Mountains, so if you're a Coors Light fan, the, the these are the mountains I believe that those uh, beer cans are based off of, the Rocky Mountains right over here, uh, right near the airport of Telluride, so... Um, It was a great, great place to, to come visit, and I really do hope that sometime in the future, um, I really do hope that sometime in the future I'm able to come back uh, and get another uh, few nights here. Even if I just come on my personal time, like for a little mini vacation up here, I would absolutely love to do it. You definitely feel the altitude. Um, the, uh, I had a giant headache the first over the first night of the overnight just because my body was trying to acclimate to the fact that you're at 9,000 feet above sea level so you definitely notice the altitude when you're there and especially even more so when we were hiking oh my god I thought <laughs> there was one point where I legitimately thought I was just never going to be able to breathe while we were taking that hike because uh, it was a bit a bit exerting uh, being up at that altitude but um I was not single at the time when I was there, Kenny Monster, so I definitely was behaving myself. You better believe that, okay? I am a loyal man. Don't forget it. Tell you what, though, chat, that's going to do it for me. I had one leg in mind, and we've completed it. A little bit on the frame droppy side, unfortunately, so I do apologize for that. My internet has been unstable at times in the last couple of weeks, probably because everyone and their mothers is at home because it's winter and there's a bunch of stuff going on with lockdowns in New York like we all just talked about, but it is what it is. Um, we had a good time. It was a great approach. Good little flight on our CJ4 again. Happy to have you guys along for the ride. Let's see who's still streaming so we can give you guys over to someone, get a nice little hosty host out. Oh, uh, Let's go ahead and give the host agent B7. She's streaming. I'm sure Kenny Monster's already over there talking in her chat, so we might as well join up with him. Let's see. I gotta wait for an ad here, chat. Once this ad is over, we'll see what she's doing, and then we'll go say hello. Freaking ads. You guys keep enjoying the view of the mountains here behind the Telluride Airport for just a second. There we go. What is she in? She's flying on Pilot Edge. She's doing Scottsdale to Las Vegas. I have no idea what she's flying. I'll be honest with you guys. She's not sure at all what she's flying based on just looking at the cockpit but why don't you go and uh pay her a visit everybody we're gonna go raid her everybody have a great night thank you for coming in today as always i really do appreciate it and uh stay safe guys please i know it's it's a weird world out there so just try and stay safe say hello to agent b7 for me have a good night